action to the... All right, guys. Uh, part two of the stream is back up. Uh, so if you, when you bring the baits up your cam, if you could just go a little slower so I can catch them as they go by. <laughs> go like that. Yeah, we got plenty to go through. Where do them other bags of baits go? And I apologize for the people on YouTube that are watching. I may have lost all the viewers. I don't know what's going on. I uh, need to get the bugs worked out. I'm going to try to watch it on my phone now. Everything looks fine. But you've shrunk again, Hellabass. You're, like, tiny. Let me see if I can get you to get big again. That's what my wife tells me. Uh, no comment. I'm not going to say I have or haven't heard the same thing, but now you've went big. What the crap? Hellabass. Uh, I've seen this happen before. Yeah. Did you just, like, get an right. or something? Hi, bait man. Please give me a shout-out. Henry Harrington, there's your shout-out, baby. I don't usually shout like some people. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Henry, for joining in. Thank you for joining in. Uh, Minnesotans are always the problem. Whoa, Ryan, Bill, whoa. Wow, shots fires. God. I think he's from Minnesota, though, so I'll let, it, I'll let it slide. Thomas Hines says, Hellabash is a grower, not a shower. Wow. Here's my collection of there you go, Henry Harrington. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining in tonight. If you're new, make sure you smash the like button. Batman Jr. is going to put his box up. Wait, let me. BMJ can't even lift it. It's so much bait in there now. Are you pretty proud of that thing? Yeah. Did you know that all these baits in this room are yours? Yeah, and yours. They're they're mine, but you can have them anytime. Yeah, so now that we got a new video, you guys have had to hit the like button again. And uh, I don't know. This is just part two of tonight. So where's the rest of them baits? Over here. Be, but just time, instead of smashing it, let's gently tap it so we don't break G the stream yeah, again. tap the like button. What's up, 10 Horse Morning? Don't smash it. Don't break your phone. All right. So we opened this box the other night. This had the pop bars and the Cordell spots and everything. So some of you guys... Have seen that if you haven't. Uh, go back a couple videos. You going in? Bait Junior's had enough. He's cold. He's going in. I don't blame him. Uh, He's got some got some Fortnite to play. We deleted Fortnite around here. All right. Ooh. Back to what we're saying. Outdoors Geek. Does boss of crankbaits work better during certain times of the year? Um, I would say at times, yes. Um, I'm not saying every fish you catch. Uh, on a boss is going to be bigger or better. Um, the spring, obviously, from like the colder the water, the better. I like from now to like March when the water hits about 65, I'll go to you know my plastics um, injected baits. Um, if I'm fishing a lot of wood, brush, stuff like that, I really like a boss of bait. And one reason is bass tend to congregate the wood, especially warming up water. Yeah, bosses are made and designed to deflect really hard, and you get a little bit better reaction out of a balsa bait. Uh, and the thing is, balsa's not real consistent. You can get five baits from one guy, and there's going to be one that's just got a little bit different hunt to it. Uh, plastics, that's a, they're very consistent, so it's harder to get a plastic bait to truly hunt, unless you make a special design bait like a the Axis or the Mega Bass S crank. So that's my deal on yeah. the balsa. So Pro tip, if you get a balsa bait that really works, right, get yourself a little sharpie, make a little X under the bill or under the throat, mm -hmm. and then that's the one that's like your go-to. Absolutely. So if I'm out like, uh, and this has happened several times before, out messing around for a tournament or whatnot, and you get that one that you're getting a lot of bites on, I cut it off. And I'll do like Rich said, mark something on the bill. I usually just put a dot on the bill or X or whatever. I put it in the box. Because that's one I want to throw on tournament day. Uh, I don't want to take a chance of breaking that one off and then, hey, well, I want no good on tournament. So, you can do, and that's a great tip. You can do that for jerk baits. Uh, some would say OG warts. You can do that for a lot of different things. So, DT sixes. DT sixes. You just can't press hard with a sharpie. You'll bust the bill off. <laughs> uh, but we're back anyway. So thank you guys for tuning back in. I may have lost. We had like 190 people and we, we lost them. So We were creeping on 200. That's all right. Uh, no big deal. I am I feel like a loser. I won't be doing anything better tonight. My wife worked all day. She's ready to go to bed. So, um, 
You throw BH bass magnets. Never heard of one, to be honest with you. Never heard of one. Uh, Charles wants to know anyone ordered any OG Slims. I have. Um, they are in stock at places. Uh, someone in here said they got theirs from Omnia Fishing already. Uh, I imagine Tackle Warehouse has got some coming. Thing is, uh, and this is how it works in retail, people may pre-order so many and are back ordering so many that when they do get a shipment in Tackle Warehouse or other places, they really don't have that many to, you know. The Omnia is showing the perch in stock. If you want perch. Yeah, so if you live above Illinois, that's the only color you really need. No one down here in the south throws that very often. But it's a very underrated color. Uh, my dad used to throw a lot of... There's a... When they're like a... I don't want to say... There was a perch color DT. It had like glassy eyes. Uh, my dad used to throw that when I very first come out. He used to catch a lot of fish on that DT and like well, a perch. And when you think about it, fire tiger is popular all over, and perch and fire tiger are pretty close. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's a, you can use this dirty water color down here. Obviously, up north, it's a perch imitator, but fire tiger works really well. Or we could call it Mountain Dew. Rick, you know, whatever. It, Rick, we all know the S is silent, Illinois, but we know it really annoys the people from Illinois when we pronounce the S. Is it so? Is it Illinois or Illinois? Illinois. Okay. I really don't care. Um, I, I like to annoy people, but I've heard of El Illinois, 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 and Illinois. I, but I live in West. What do you know about the KBD 1.5 Hard Knocker? Lucas wants to know. Uh, I've thrown one. Uh, it's just like the regular 1.5. It's just got a knocker in it. Uh, think of it as their version of the uh, the six cents 50x or the 100x. Mm -hmm. That's got the you know rattle knocker in it. That's, that's all they did. So. Yeah, Jeremy Conkright, There still is perch in Kentucky Lake. I caught one last year on a rattle trap, believe it or not. There's actually some big ones in on Barker Lake. Uh, I used to do a lot of red ear fishing. I used to always catch those perch around the red ear beds. They're delicious, but it's not like uh, you find them everywhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Illinois has the Tech best basketball the team in orange. Too. Ooh, where are they ranked, Dustin? I know the balls are ranked number nine. Uh, let's see. How does the Spence Water Scout run? Uh, Spence Scouts kind of runs got pretty tight action. It's basically, kind of a metal whip square bill. Um, let's see. Tackle Warehouse has the perch color in stock too. So evidently, uh, Rapala said everybody's buying the perch color. We're going to make thousands of them. All right. Let's see what else. Let's see what kind of baits Darius hit, we, hit me with. He, uh, he sure did load up Bait Junior pretty good. I already, I can already tell you I got some OGs right here. Look here. Got any bandit guys in here? Uh, there's orange sparkle, I believe, and you can tell that's old because the overspray up on the lip. Got them triple grip hooks. Dynamite spring color right here, Rich. You see that mm -hmm. orange flake in there? I always thought this would be a red, but I'm pretty sure this color is actually called orange sparkle because of that. Mm. Bandit 300. That's that's the deeper one. I don't know how many fish have been caught on bandit crate baits. We got, we got several of them in here. These are all the old ones too. This was one of my favorite ones to uh, throw back in the day. Pearl with red eyes. One of the most popular bandit colors they've ever made. Uh, a lot of guys troll for crappie, for sauger with this. Uh, your part of the woods would be walleyes. Uh, just a good bait. I think I got one of those. Uh oh, you got a pearl red eye? Yeah, with the red hook. Uh, they also made a pearl chartreuse eye, believe it or not. Iowa Hawkeyes are pretty good at basketball, I'm not going to lie. 
Well, Taylor, the Vols have only lost once. And that was to Arkansas, who's, or no, to Missouri. Who did they lose to? They weren't even that good, I don't think. So, uh, Bonnie, I haven't uh, been getting any messages, but uh, the last stream, I just come back on because the stream messed up. Um, here's, oh yeah, that's it. They also made a bone with red eyes. That's bone with red eyes. This is the bone. Yeah, it's got yeah. that little pink <clears throat> belly. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yep. Here's one. Humblebee. So it's kind of like a bumblebee. But it's a brown, reddish, and yellow. That was a good one. I'm going to be loading up my mid-depth crankbase here. Let's see. Here's Spire Tiger, you say? How about a bandit 300 and fire tiger i have never been a huge fire tiger guy but evidently it works and a lot of people catch fish on it because like when six cents come out with the flat 75 and fire tiger they were going like crazy and i'm over here like dude oh yeah that's a good one old one you can always tell the old ones that sometimes those that paint gets over around the lips and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tennessee lost to Bama in basketball. Football is pretty expected, but uh, Bama's team, man, they, they started shooting lights out. You can't defend that. Dude, Bandit. I like. I feel like Bandits were some of the first to really, like, pump the spatter back pattern. Yes, they kind of were, and they were the first company to really come out with a big multitude of colors. Like, you had Bill Norman, who did it really well in like the gel coat colors, but Bandit did it from just neutral colors to different perch to different crawls, and then they went translucent, all kinds of stuff. You think the internet's finally going down like Travis Manson said it would? Maybe that solar flare? Yeah. Is that what we're talking possible about? Possible EMPs? Uh, shout out to Travis, though. He's I definitely will be prepared for it. I do have these ones still I'm sitting on right here. Oh, baby. Woo. I got one of them. I like how every company, there's like not one standard chartreuse purple. Like Mega Basses is, is, yeah. I like, I like the thing about uh, Bandit. Like, look at the difference in the amount of orange yeah. on the throat from, you know, two of the same baits yep. here. Well, see, before they sold out to Practical, and, uh, they were all painted in-house. And then they went to... Ch yeah, just like even like the eyeballs on these. Like, look how different the eyeballs. These were definitely not the same person painting this yep. color. And the amount of spatter is completely different. Um. Yeah, thanks, Monty Mac. I, I appreciate the dono. Uh, so did Bateman Jr. I know it's busy down there at Mallard Estates at Outfitters. Uh, I've seen you and Blake's photo on Facebook. And got all cleaned up on me, so... Uh, I'm looking forward to this spring. We're going to go chase. Looking, looking dapper. Dude, Monty has, uh, evidently he's got some uh, backwater holes for some old janks. Uh, he told me last year. Nice. On the buzz baits. Yes, orange gold sparkle. I believe that's what it was, Tom. Uh, Jared, line suggestion for square bills. Fishing around boat docks, some grass. Uh, you know, I like light line. Uh, 12 pounds, kind of my square bill line. But... Uh, I'll give you all a tip. If you're throwing bigger square bills, like uh, a six cents mini mag, I mean, this is a big square bill compared to, you know, a 50X or whatnot. You can get away with heavier line. One, because the bait's heavier, it won't be near as buoyant as a smaller bait. So, you know, you could throw something like that mini mag on a 14, 16 pound line and not hurt you at all. Um, and I think for square bill, and I think mono definitely in play. Yeah. If you're really like, if you're really four by four square building where you're really digging and climbing over, mono is going to help you get through that stuff better than floral. Yeah, I think. Absolutely, uh, man. To be honest, if you're fishing, you know, five foot of water or less, I don't think line really matters that much. I know I might have just, <laughs> dude. I've caught a lot of fish on braided line, on throwing a you know six inch quake on braid, up shallow in dirty water. Works really good. Now I'll make a have a little rod that's not as stiff, but 
Uh, the OP line CXX, that's my favorite rattle trap line ever. You know, if I'm not fishing out deep or nothing like that, I like that copolymer. And, dude, I throw it on like, I don't know, it's 15 pound P line. It's a great square bill line, too. Yeah, when I say mono, I'm probably usually talking about a copoly. <laughs> I don't think I actually throw a straight mono, but. Yeah, um, that canine line I use is really good. Uh, P line, Maxima, any of that copolymer. Most everybody's is pretty good. Uh, but in. You know, you know what's one one that I threw a lot back in the day was the Cajun, Cajun Red. Yeah, Cajun was a good one. Uh, some people say AN40 or Super Silver Thread. Yeah, AN40 and Cajun Red were my uh, my co-polys of the choice back in the day. Yeah, the only thing about P-Line, it's good, man. It just, god dang, you're going to get memory. Like, I, I remember, like, stripping it off reels to change out, and it's just like a slinky falling out there. But, you know, the big tip on that stuff is before you go fishing hook a jig to your trailer hitch on your truck walk out about 75 yards and stretch it real good and then it'll lay flat and then get the stretch out so uh. yeah thomas i don't think so i just i think braid to floro you just have to embrace the the leader knot that's the way to go i i used to feel the way you did like i don't want that extra knot but after fishing a while now it's just no way around it, in my opinion. Yeah, unless you go with a like a a copolymer, but it's got to be super soft. Uh, Yozuri makes a pretty good copolymer you could put on spinning uh, reel, but fluorocarbon just got a lot of memory if you go straight. Now I know some pros that say, "Oh, I just tie." A, they don't tie later. They use like a number ten or a number eleven spro swivel. But uh, me, yeah, I'm going braid. <laughs> And there are some, you know, situations where people use straight fluoro or some, but like, boy, it's expensive too, because no matter what, um, you're changing it all the time, even good stuff for memory. So braid to fluoro is so much cheaper too. Like, and then you can buy a really nice fluoro because you're only going to use eight feet of it at a time. Yeah. I've got like a spool of like 10 pounds sunline later and uh it's lasted me like four years because you know i only use like this much at a time and uh, if you're not an insert joke here about how you don't fish so that's also true too uh, <laughs> let's see someone says uh, what are the benefits of floral later one visibility um uh, I, I don't know that's a good question i like I, number one is the visibility. When you're throwing a, those finesse baits and stuff like that, um, a lot of guys are. I don't want them to see. A braided line is very visible. Um, I like the blue braid. I don't know if fish really care that much or not because you think, well, why would they not bite that? But they'll buy, you know, a one and a half ounce tungsten weight uh, flipped in a bush or a mat. Well, you're fishing shallower water where they're. It's not like they can see. You're not throwing a Ned rig in a bush in dirty water. You're fishing that out clear, deeper water where those fish have a chance yeah. to dissect what's going on. Finesse fishing. Fishing slow. It's typically not a reaction bite. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I also think when you're using a little bit longer leader, when you're using a 4 to you know, 10, 12-foot leader, you are getting some of the advantages in the stretch. Mm -hmm. um, so you get the kind of that balance where you're getting a little bit of stretch and a little bit of feel. Straight braid, sometimes I feel like, Especially like on a, a worm or something where you're like, well, you're going to kind of lift on that fish and kind of weigh it a little bit before you set it. Then fish, if you, as much as you can feel all that they on a tight line, it. then fish can yeah, feel that. Absolutely. So I think like it gives you a little bit of fluff to be able to like weigh that fish and, and make sure it's swimming before you set the hook. I feel like straight braid, I felt, <clears throat> because I'm a person that likes to like kind of lift on a fish a little bit. Um, I felt like I had a lot of more fish drop my bait. When I tried to fish straight braid, yeah. Um, someone tell I lost. I used to lose a lot of fish on straight braid on a football jig, and I tried it. Didn't like it. It's like I feel them bite, and I'm like, yeah, I'd reel to fill the fish. It goes set the hook, and they're gone. And buddy said, you've got to use some kind of leader. And I said, why is that? And he said, dude, they that braid's no stretch. If you can fill them, I promise you fill them. So I started using a, 
I tried out fluorocarbon later. I was using like a 50 pound braid, which might have been overkill, uh, to a 17 pound fluorocarbon later. And when I fill them, I just set the hook immediately. I didn't try to like, rip, like you know, lead them and then jam them. I just dropped a slack, bam, set the hook. Hardly ever lost one or missed one. But it's braid super sensitive, but sometimes fishing deep like that, I, I felt like every rock was a bite. You know what I mean? I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Get it, get it. I, I will say, if, if you've been a straight co-poly, straight mono, straight floral person, and then you make that switch to braid a leader, there's an adjustment period for yeah, sure. absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got in here, Hello. Um, I'm going to open this other package up. I got in today. Got a, one of the more popular bandit colors there. I think it's uh, brown, orange, craw. Really good one, good springtime color. Actually, seen Terry Bolton catch a lot of big fish on this color one day. He was out there fishing close to me, and man, he was whatever he was doing was working. But I'm, I said, I said, what are you throwing? He even showed me. I was like digging in my box. This is like 18. Little did I know, it was more like the brush pile he was fishing. Oh yeah, that same, same one. one. It's a 300. I had the 200. Uh, you'll notice in the 300s they get that little uh, in the lip. They got the little little ball. You ever notice that? The little ball on the lip. Yep. Got me some more shad wraps. Here's the classic white blue back shad wrap. Now this is one I like. Very underrated color. Chrome, orange belly, blue back. But if you notice, mm. look at that flash really flashes that light really well and it almost comes off as an orange hue like that yeah i used, I used to throw a husky jerks in that color a lot i've got some big fish on a rattle trap in that color believe it or not now check this out i've got a few of these look at these tail spinners uh darius who made these things if you're in here still look at that little tail spinner you see that it looks like a little crappie with a tail on the back. Yeah, it's different than I've seen. Like, it's not a Fritz Blitz or it's not a <clears throat> Little George. It's... Yeah, this looks like a... Eric might know. Could be a homemade deal. What's up, Tim? Yeah. Less than go Henry, balls, I buddy. wouldn't say that... I don't think the jointed shad wraps are better, but they're definitely different. Yeah, I love the jointed shad wrap. I mean, they're different, like... I feel like the jointed shad wraps more like a summer crankbait, and the regular shad wraps are more of a cold water crankbait. I like the jointed shad wrap once it gets to like there's a once you say there's a definite uh, lipless bite, uh, like those fish, they kind of get off a jerk bait, and everyone's like, oh, I'm catching them on a square bill or a rattle trap. That's when that jo uh, jointed shad wrap's really good. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not the subtle cold water bait that a regular right. shad wrap is. Yeah, I don't know who makes these tail spinners, man. Um, speaking of Travis, he may be a guy that would know something like that. It, it seems like it might kind of be up his alley. Um, dude, these look cool, though. They look like little baby crappies. See that? Mm-hmm. These things are cool. I like them. Uh, little George is sweet, and I do like the Little George because you run the line to the treble. And it slides up and whatnot. These, you, they don't go through the bait. Right. I do like they put a good hook on it. Darius says he don't know. Let's see what else. Oh, look at here. Speaking of George, we do got some. So here's the man's little George. Right here. No hooks in these. Yeah. See, they made a suspending joint and shad wrap. Not sure or all are. That's true. They did do that. So here's little George, and you can tell totally different than the other sp uh, tail spans. No hooks included. That's okay. I got hooks. Definitely a good cold water bait. Uh, <clears throat> my buddy always keeps them in his boat in case the whites come out and jumps. He, he says, I got to get me some white bass to eat. Uh, but I've seen some big yeah. smallmouth caught on those things, especially this time of year. Henry, you can throw the, the standard shad wrap all winter. That's just a good all winter crankbait. And then when it starts to warm up, then try the, the jointed. Yeah, so Henry, this style right here, this is just a normal. This is like a shad wrap number seven. 
Uh, this is a standard shad like color. This is an old one, man. This is uh, this one's made in Ireland. I like the Ireland ones. Uh, but anyway, this bait right here is from now till middle of March. Cold water below 55 degrees. A shad wrap catches a lot of fish. Get you some eight pound fluorocarbon uh, or 10 pound, put on some spinning gear, go to town with that. You, or do the braid deal, 20 pound braid to eight pound fluorocarbon uh, and, and fish it on a spinning rod. Uh, now that yeah, definitely a spinning rod or a light bait caster, you won't throw yeah, it. Yeah, you, you don't go out there trying to put that on a seven foot medium heavy. It ain't gonna work. You need like a six eight six ten medium, um, in, in or a medium light spinning rod. A lot of guys throw it on a spinning rod. Um, I saw my, my father in law loves to, loves to troll them. Yeah, he trolls them for pike. What's up, hey, Luke? Luke Master in here? Says, Master start in with the, the shad rep number five. Work up from there. I always go big and then I go small. I guess that's because of where I live. I always start with like a seven or eight, uh, and then I go smaller. Just because uh, we've got so many gizzard shad here. But that's a good tip. You know, either go start big and go small, or go small and go big. Uh, it's all about getting those things to cast. That's that's the problem. I saw a pro that's got a shad wrap spinning rod. It's, just, it's the only thing I throw on it. The guides are <laughs> offset. They're set, you know, the. Instead of straight down the spine, they're offset to the right. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, think about it. When you cast the spinner, spinner reel uh, at the angle, the line's coming off clockwise. It keeps the line from twisting as it's going out. And he says, I get about five to six more yards of cast on a shad wrap. I was like, really? It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's kind of a spiral wrap. Yeah. Fire burner, you're correct. So. Yeah, well, no, no need. If the 15-pound to 8-pound floor works for you, no need to go up to 20 pound. Yeah. Unless you're having issues with it, but 15 to 8 is, is a good setup. Yeah, it's definitely a crazy fluke. Uh, it's it's like shad rat time right now, uh, especially on the Tennessee River, uh, everywhere. I, it's like, dude, my toes are freezing. I got on some hay dudes and no socks right now. Well, uh, Big bass in my lake is so damn deep and full of spots. It's hard to catch anything under 20 feet deep. It eliminates a lot of things I would love to throw. Oh, all right. That's true. Eliminating more. Yeah, those 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 little uh, blade baits you showed, those little, that would be perfect yep. for them. All right, now here's some OG. Look here. Front runner. Front, uh. Dude, these were going for big money a few years ago. Those guys paying like $20 a piece for them, but I think the market got flooded and then thankfully. Uh, they're not that expensive, but I think I've got one. If you guys don't know, these are great to put in front of like your super spook, your shower blow, any kind of walking bait. Uh, you see up top, it's got a little hole here. Your line goes through that, it goes through here, and through that, and it it sits there and does this little movement. So it looks like your spook or whatever walking bait's chasing the bait fish. It does got a hook on it. Sometimes you will catch a fish on this one. Uh, just making an optical illusion reminds me of, uh, you know, out deep sea fishing. Uh, they're trying to catch the marlins, and they have those, you know, teaser teaser rigs. And that's basically what it is: the teaser rigs, and you got the bait behind it, and they come up eating the bait. That's the bass fishing version of the teaser rig. Yes, ten horse money. What's up, man? It was made by Norman Lucas. I still throw strand line. Only bluegill fishing, though. Like, I take Bakeman Junior's bluegill fish in the spring when I go. It's just going to be a straight up strand fest. All right. Let's see. I think that's about all. Oh, I did get some. Dude, sent me some crazy. Look at this freaking bladed jig. This is called the Mega Elite Blade. Like, no doubt about it. It's a Mega Elite Blade. Look at the size on this thing. Look at the blade. It's huge. Woo. Uh, Beefy. got a split ring. This is cool. It's got a double weed guard here. And this, I mean, this thing's like stiff. Uh, is it, so it's like brush, like throw it right in the trees. and Yeah, this is like stiff to the point where you probably got to throw it on braid or you ain't right. hooking them. Uh, <laughs> this is made by New Tech Lures. I've never seen this. Oh, yeah. New Tech? Okay. Yeah. I've seen their jigs. Uh, so this is their 
Mega Elite Blade. Check this guy out, oh, guys. Now, that might be a dirty water dude that's just making all kinds of crazy commotion, stuff like that. So, if Derry says Mega Killer Nighttime Bait. There we go. I like that. That definitely would get their attention at night. Darius likes a night fish, too. Chris, Chris. Chris Conrad says he got some waddle bot bats in from Japan today. Oh, yeah? You get you a few <clears> of these guys? <throat> Mr. Old Rick Bartz, he, uh, he hooked me up with those right there. I need to get the bigger version. This is such a cool bait. Uh, I would say it's one of the more underrated baits because not a lot of people in the U.S. know about this thing. You know, the Axis has got a lot of crazy action and the jabber jaw, but this was like the original crazy action uh, crankbait it's not a hunt it's like a dart I like you'll just be reeling it and then it go kind of it'll blow yeah. out and then it comes back it's crazy uh, let's see what else we got in here and then we'll open our other mail package we got some more uh, worms uh, the teaser some little teasers let's see what this guy looks like anybody remember these guys it's got a string in it that the teaser worm yes the string runs all the way through the worm to like your two huh. hooks this would be a good challenge oh pre-rig anybody want to can you catch fish off this old worm mm -hmm. i think i've got enough bait telebass i could do a fishing challenge with an old bait for two years and not have to use the same bait twice That's just not my MO. I see Tyler talking about, <clears throat> yeah, Brian Thrift was throwing some giant Z-Man prototypes on Ufala, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it come to market yet. Why do I feel like it wasn't really a Z-Man prototype? And it was just yeah, it probably wasn't a Z-Man, but I'm surprised they haven't got it out yet. Right. Um, I'm sure it was a homemade version of something. Um, I haven't tried the Rapala V-Blade. Um, I haven't played around with it. I saw Omnia got them in. I don't know. It just wasn't. It didn't and it came, when it came out, it was... I'm sure they didn't intend this, but because of the whole supply chain and like the COVID, right? It came out in summertime, right? Which it seems like it's more of a wintertime bait. So I saw some. Uh, this did, when it came out, this didn't feel right time of year, so I just never got excited about it. Yeah, <laughs> I saw some at Dicks the other day, and they look really good. Like uh, they look mean, like they got attitude. Yeah, as uh, I saw another YouTuber say, he didn't like the new baits because they all look like they have an angry eyebrow. <laughs> It was a, it was a, I'm not gonna lie, the video had a lot of bad misinformation in it, but I didn't expect the person to really know. But they're like, this is a, might be a rare rig award because its eyes don't look like they have angry eyebrows. And I'm like, <laughs> but it's, I was like, it's not an original wig award. I know the package is original series. It's not an original. Yeah, that's an OG. Does it say wig award under it like that? Yeah, dude, it was actually in the package. It said Rapala original series. So. Uh, that's okay. Um, let's see. Have you seen the Uncle Josh Port Frog come back? I have. It's like Acme Tackle or something. What's the name of it? Is it Acme Tackle? Yeah. Slash Uncle Josh? Something like that. And they're like three bucks a piece? Yeah. Like three in a jar for like ten What's bucks? up, Victor? Yeah, we were actually killing it pretty good earlier. Uh, we, we were up to about 200 people, and then YouTube just took a dump on us. Um, we'll be back. We're on our way. We're steadily climbing. Yeah, I don't know how long we'll go tonight. We've already been 35 minutes on this one. We're at about almost an hour on the other one or something like that. No, we're about 35. So, um, it is what it is. We're just killing killing time this Friday night. Uh, I'm just, just trying to get the algorithm going good for when we get to Millican on here tomorrow night. Um, plus, an oh, hell of ass. Um, let's see. Look at here. A Kelly's lure, Luring Lady. Another pre-rigged one. Hmm. Kelly's Luring Lady. Uh-huh. <clears throat> hmm. I don't think that would lure my wife. It, anyway. <laughs> uh, my When I first started bass fishing, when I was a kid, my dad and I used to throw what was called a bill-scented worm. Hmm. And uh, it was a pre-rigged worm, and it had that kink built in it. And it like the, the pre-rigged leader came out about, I don't know, 10 inches to a... A loop, and then we'd we'd put a swivel on that, and we throw it on spinning rods and just 
slowly reel it in. We used to catch the fire out of them. I mean, just these are uh, uh, made. Derry says in the seventies, made in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is are scented. These are definitely scented, but they kind of smell like my grandpa's shoes. They're that old. That's pretty cool how they put the the one. You got one worm in the, in the in a plastic sleeve. One worm. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The, the Bill scented worms used to come in a little plastic like that with a little staple, and they came on a card, mm -hmm. and like they'd be stapled on the card like crappie jigs, and you'd go in the tear them off and buy them, or you'd go buy a whole card. Here's some more of the tasers. <laughs> There's five in a pack it's called the old spook worm right here, the taser spook worm. It said white with a <laughs> green back. It's not quite green anymore. I do love on the not quite white yeah. either. <laughs> Yeah, I do love on the back of these packages, it says, this is not a toy. Keep out of reach of children. So you hear that, Guggen? <laughs> Guggen, you're watching. These are not toys. Got to keep out of reach of the children. So that means you cannot fish these. Uh, I, I I definitely think there's a time and a place still for the pre-rigged worm. No doubt. I think bass just haven't seen them in a long time. If they'll eat a robo worm, why wouldn't they eat this? How about a pre-rigged worm on a drop shot? How would you miss a fish? With this a pre rig wacky wacky rig this the pre rig no. yeah you don't miss a lot of bites but the problem was keeping them pinned right that was the trouble little tiny crappie hooks in there oh look at this one this is a floating version y'all know what color this is this is the old sherbert oh sherbert and a floating one I like these things man. Yeah, Victor, I started fishing when I was probably younger than, than Bateman Jr. I don't know, but as long as I can remember. Let's see. Uh, here's some watermelon ones. And then, ooh, looky here. Got those ones. Looky here, Rich. Can you see this? The old speed tail on there, like the speed worm. A little red shad. Red shad, speed worm, pre-rigged. Mm. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Let's see, pull this one out. Oh, yeah. Look at that guy. <laughs> Is that... Yeah, it's got that hook way back there to catch them short That's strikers. right, that's <laughs> right. I'm surprised another company that that, like, that tried to come out and reinvent the pre-rig worm. You did have uh, True Tungsten try to pre-weight your worms. Yeah. I had some of those... Uh... Finesse worms and, and fluke style baits for a while. Um, they act, there's they actually you know six cents make the flush is a little heavier than some other soft jerk baits. Uh, I could be wrong, but wasn't a true tungsten soft jerk bait pre weighted? They made one that was a heavier weighted jerk bait. Yeah, they had like little pellets of tungsten powder. That was a really good idea, and it, they may have just been a little bit before their time on that. Because imagine if you... Well, and I think they came out with so much so fast. Right. They just they kind of outran their runway a little bit. They also paid their pro staff a ridiculous amount of money, from what I was told. They also paid their field staff a lot of money and products. Were you on that field staff, Rich? I may or may not have been. <laughs> Dude, I love their weights, man. That was the first tungsten weight to ever use. Actually, I used the Lake Fork ones with the inserts for a long time. And I never had to. Mm -hmm. But they also made ones with the screw, so you could screw them in. I like those. Uh, yep. Dude, I love the true tungsten tungsten weights. I still have true tungsten weights. Dude, they must have really hooked you up. I <laughs> need some of those tungsten beads that I can put on my the four speeds yes yeah, so i put them on the texas rigs because they don't bust like glass they're not tungsten but they hold up whatever they yeah. are yeah um you can get you can go to the craft store and find brass beads brass and tungsten's all right but glass if you put the glass bead between your tungsten weight and your hook you're going to get your feelings hurt one day it's happened to me i've set the hook and it's busted and i knew and i you know come back and thought hmm that doesn't look like it didn't break at the knot. It breaks about an inch above the knot. And you know right. what that's from. It's from that glass bead. And that tungsten weight slamming together. So, Man, I got to clean this place up. 
Let's see. We gotta see what's in here. You gotta clean it up. You're gonna have a, a big time guest on tomorrow night. So I you know. Gotta be looking your best. I know. I got Milliken coming. Here's another shad wrapper kind over here. I love that color. That old shad color that's kind of like faded out, milky. That's what they start looking like this time of year. They got Milliken on here. Yeah. One of the biggest smallies I ever caught was on the ripping wrap in that color when I was a kid. If I can find some scissors, I'll have to go find some scissors. Um. I may spin it around tomorrow. I, I don't know. I mean, if I do... I'm not going to hold my breath. No. <laughs> you know, I've got to have the sixth sense thing going on tomorrow night. So let me find let me find some uh, scissors. Who wants to see some swim baits while the bait man's gone? Anybody? Swim baits? Little dream smasher. Six inch weedless. Oh, Batman Jr. New 24K gold. Okay. Shut that door. It's so cold. Oh, dude. Rich has got the uh, Dream Smashers out. Is that the new color? This is one of the few things that I've, I've, been, I've been good. I haven't been like getting a lot of baits lately, but this. I had to get me some of these. From Dream Smasher, they're six inch weedless. It's it's set up. I think they use a I forget if it's a eight or a ten knot um, beast hook, and this is their no new twenty four k color. And uh, they sold they they had these in their drop the other night, and they were gone like these are pretty that. Heavy. Thanks, if you ask me. I've thrown one before. They're good. I lost it. About, the pre rig. They make a top hook pre rig. Yeah, I think you top hook pre rig. Out. About four years ago, a buddy of mine um, from his name's Chris Holtzclaw. He gave me one, and this was when Kentucky Lake was in its prime. And dude, I smashed on it, and then I just didn't retie, and I set the hook, and it felt good, and it just popped off. And then they were hard to get then, but he makes a great bait. You know what it really looks like, dude? They look like little Asian carp. Mm -hmm. The way their heads the juvenile design, carp, they look golden like a shiners. Ju juvenile carp. What's up, Oklahoma's worst angler? What's up, man? Uh, someone says fishing with saw. Hey, guess you got some ball sack. What? <laughs> hey, Brooks, what? you got a package in the mail today. Okay, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> He knows that. He'll run around telling me the D's nuts joke all the time. <laughs> hey, David Miller says he won an autumn hat off Instagram. Awesome, dude. Yeah, we got to get uh, Oklahoma's worst angler on here. Uh, he told me he works. For sure. He works the night. Works the nights too. I, I heard you say that, and I was gonna hit him up because I usually stream on Wednesday night. Yeah. So get Alex. Uh, he said he's at Get Alex on your show. Uh, maybe if I can get a week night off. We'll roll him uh, up into the bait live. They did a really good video that was okay. like trash it or cast it or something like that. I'd like to pull out a bunch of baits and we can decide whether we're going to junk them or chunk them. Chunk, chunk them in the trash <laughs> or chunk them on the water. What, what, what did you, sure. you find one of my baits? You like that tail spinner? Yeah, um, it's heavy. All right, we're going to get it into this bag, Big Junior. Which like may be for you or it may be for Brittany. Heavy. We'll see. Kind of heavy. <laughs> yeah, if some dude's sending my wife Thanks. baits, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> well, look at here. What if, what if what if they sent her Ned rigs? That's too small for Brittany. She's got at least, you know. She's like forty foot tall. <laughs> Who's out there? <laughs> Zipper worm. Look at here. You know, zip a zip. Ooh. Okay, you send my wife zipper worms. Come on, man. What are you trying to say here? Uh, let's see what this says. On, it even, it is, is that like a smoke or a motor yeah, oil? Yeah, it's like a smoke motor oil color. Ooh, like this. I like the zipper. That's definitely one of the kind of original finesse worms, wouldn't you say? Started out west. Uh, it's kind of a smoke. Yeah, for sure. It's that kind of a smoke purple. Green weenie, it's got some red and green flake in it. I used to throw those on a jig worm quite a bit for a while when the Berkeley pulse worm was yeah. out, which was kind of a zipper worm. Yeah. 
A lot of guys like these around docks. Yeah. Tell yeah. Neely to go inside. Go inside, Neil. Uh-oh. Yeah, my dog's trying to Big get Big girl is not happy right now. No. Is that a blizzard cup? Huh? Yeah. Uh, is that my Dairy Queen? No. Uh, here's some more <laughs> zipper worms. There's that There's that ice cream money from Sean paying off, it looks That's like. That's right. That's right. These, uh, this color here is, uh, ooh. It's a, like a green pumpkin red. Like that one. Ooh. So I'm pretty yeah. sure the guy who sent this, he fishes the Ohio River a lot. So you think these are like local Ohio river baits? Are they hand pours? What do you think they are? Yeah, they're the zipper worms. So I, didn't Robo start the zipper worm? I don't I think know. They did. But <laughs> this is probably a local deal, guys. Getting real finessy to catch them Ohio river jaints. But the, my dad used chat to a lot is, of these. I see the fish <laughs> well, it's not really The chat is fire with big worm jokes right now. <laughs> Uh, hold on, hold on. Bateman, I send you an email about Junior tonight. Check your email later. Sure will. Sure will. Uh, that is not a Mondo worm. I don't endorse the Mondo worm. Uh, we got a little card in here. This is Bateman. Thank you, card. <laughs> thank you, card. <laughs> this is Kevin, thanks for your show. I enjoy watching. You're knowledgeable about baits. And as a guy who has been bassing since the 90s, I've seen a lot of baits. You bring back memories. I think it's awesome. You try to include Bateman Jr. You're very patient. That I am. I hope you enjoy the extra goodies. Justin Baker. Appreciate it, Justin. Uh, I know what else is in here. Um, it's crazy when I put something up here and say I'm looking for it. It happened. Who are you here? The Terminator. Not blade that I've been looking for. There you go. That's it, right there. Uh, I actually had another guy DM me on Instagram as well, and so I've got several coming to me. I got a buddy. I'm gonna split them in half and we'll send them to him. He'll be absolutely ecstatic because he has gave up looking for them. And he's gonna catch fish. Out yeah, of and he's actually gonna go fishing with them. I, yeah, but this is, was one of those night blades, and I used them too. They're hard to. When they first come out, we didn't realize how good they really were. Because, you know, I threw a Stan Sloan and an Accent, and then these held up really, really well. The problem is you might break one off. We couldn't find them no more, but that's that OG uh, Terminator T1 Night Blade. I believe it's a number six on the back of that. And for four ninety five, after you bought the spinnerbait, you could get Jimmy Houston's VHS to taught you how to do that. Let's see what else is in here. That's a pretty good deal. So, since so Fishing with Sawyer keeps talking about who has the biggest balls, it made me think of a. Uh, oh yeah. Does your swim bait have balls? It says our swim baits have balls. I got mine up there from Mr. Velvet. Where'd my where my scissors go? Mm. I literally had some scissors, and you come in here, and they're gone. So guess what I got? I got Mr. Box Cutter. What's the best blade color for this time of year? Uh, man, I like gold. Um, I like a big thumping uh, tandem combination. Or like I'm going to go with... See, I'm moving my spinner baits around too, hella bad. This combination right here is awful deadly in the dirty water. Uh, the big Colorados, and you got, and you got the orange blade up here. Dude, you got to calm down. You're going everywhere, Brooks. Jared, that true tungsten gill bait is actually a pretty yeah, good bait. Yeah, it is. Bait. Again, uh, kind of ahead of the time. You look at some of the swim bait companies now. DRT, uh, this JDM baits. They're like doing them where you can add and subtract tails or add weight. Dude, True Toxin was, did that add to weight thing a long time ago. Be careful, I don't want you to get hooked. And I've seen some some guys that are good swim bait fishermen, mm -hmm. and in their like Instagram videos and pictures, you see the True Tungsten gill show up. Yes, you do. Oh this dude, get uh, DD22 right here, OG, good looking color. 
kind of like a lavender with chartreuse on it. Uh, he has changed the hooks on this, by the way. These are not the hooks that come on a DD-22. They are sharp. Really good looking bait right there. <laughs> almost a Jaint Juices. Almost. That's a new one, too. It's or it's in the best shape I've ever seen. Maybe Justin's like me. me. Maybe he just hasn't been fishing in a while. But love that. I got a dedicated DD-22 box somewhere. Maybe you should clean the bait room. Let's see. Uh, I got one from Rich and one from velvet to add to the one i already had dude got three of them they're getting harder and harder to get uh i got a whole box of them i actually traded one away to uh jsj for one of his snack size gills i've got a little bitty one like my original true was yeah those <laughs> those things were tiny they're almost like the little baby bullshad they're so small they're almost like a lipless oh, crankbait flat a up in the house look at here uh -oh. Uh oh look at that one a shallow flat a in one of my favorite colors that's that uh translucent lavender shad that's a hard one to find and does rattle but that's the shallow version you don't see these very often at all that's that's kind of a color i really only throw in the fall hella bass it's never really done well in the spring but in the fall when the thread fins mm -hmm. and the little gizzards start coming out the water's clear. That one's a really, really good bait. Whew. Nice. Doug, natural lake versus man-made lake. Yes, the main thing you're going to see is that a, a dammed up lake is going to have more defined creek channels, and the fish are going to relate to those more so. So that's going to be something you want to key on on a small dammed lake. I would not. Yeah, don't lose those, Brooks. Okay, put them in that box. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, like Kentucky Lake, man-made lake. So we have really well-defined creek channels and a river channel and all that. You go to a natural lake, you know, places like where Rich is from up north, there's a lot of natural lakes that you know, weren't dammed up just there. You don't have those definitive creek channel lines. And uh, is it me, Rich, could I be wrong? Do a lot of natural lakes don't have big long creek arms and stuff like that. They're more a natural rounded shape. I don't mean a bow. Yeah, they tend like to, have to be rounded. They have bays. They have pockets. But uh, the only channels we have are typically dredged. Check this out. Oh. oh what do you think about that, Junior? Gosh, <laughs> the dancing Dude, eel freak. up in the house. <laughs> dancing eel and royal shad. Greatest bait I've ever received. It's pretty close. The original swim bait. Is this the original swim bait? I don't know. I remember. So when, when I was younger, we used to go down south, and uh, we'd always stop in Springfield at the at the the original Bass Pro Shops, the Mega, right? And uh, I remember seeing the dancing eel and the dancing craw, and we bought some complete junk, <laughs> but awesome. Ron Thiel says, "Who was the pro that promoted the dancing eel? Uh, Bill Dance, baby, the greatest of all time." Uh, Maybe not in the tournament winning, but dude, dance. We all on YouTube, the Googans, we should all thank Bill Dance for showing everyone the world of connecting to people through fishing and promotion. Uh, he was kind of the pioneer of the fishing show, if you think about it. And uh, now, now we got Bandito Bugs and Six Cents and whatever else. Dude, I, I have some OG uh, dancing eels that they're made of a different material. Um, and they had to dance and crawl, but I think I'm gonna have to have, go to Lake X and try to see if I can't catch one on the dancing eel. That big a challenge, like an old school retro bassin challenge video. Yeah. Can you catch one on the dancing eel? If you can't catch one at Lake X, you can't catch one. It's just, uh, and I say that, and me and Menendez filmed up there for two days in a row and got two bites uh, not long ago. So it just because it's uh. Uh, private lake doesn't mean they just bite automatically. You think I'm getting baits? Who gives it? You mix bass says, I can't hear you, bait man. Can everybody hear me? Can anybody else not hear the bait man? I can hear him. Uh, let's see. Right, what's up, John Perez? Uh, the original banjo minnow was killer. The new one is terrible. I, I seen some original kits floating around the other day. Uh, I've heard it actually makes a really good bladed jig trailer. Um, the thing I'm getting me some baits because it's almost my birthday.
birthday. Dude has asked me for a <laughs> PlayStation. Uh, what else you want for your birthday? A customized A Xbox. customized Xbox controller and a PlayStation. Now he says, you think I can get me some more baits for my birthday? Man. Or, oh. Bateman Jr., how would you like a custom visor? How about, would you like a custom visor like that from Hellabass? <laughs> no. No, why not? <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's not cool. You know, he puts a lot of time and effort into making those visors. You sure you don't want one? He got him a haircut not long ago, my so. Kids my kids don't think I'm cool either. That's okay, B man, <sighs> Junior. I think my, I don't think my kids ever gave me a chance to be cool. Like they're automatically like, yeah, they're not cool, Dad. But he hangs out with me on the stream, so I must either he thinks you guys, the viewers, are cool or something. I think he goes back to school and says, like, hey, I was on YouTube with my dad. Is that what you do? Sometimes I tell my friends about the stream. Oh, sometimes you tell your friends about the stream? Oh, they, I'm nice. definitely not the cool dad at the end. They're probably, like, go back to their mom like, my, my friend Brooks' his dad, like, talks on baits on the internet. He's weird. <laughs> Let's see. I've been testing different scoundrel heads. The hooks are too big for five-inch baits. Bought some Jimmy Houston scrounger jig is going to take the skirts off. I agree, Gary. I think most guys are putting too big of a hook. Um, I'll let it out. Uh, I've seen some of Lambert's, his own stuff. His hooks ain't as big as what uh, a lot of guys think they are. I, that, I think that's one of his kind of deals I'm not supposed to talk about. His hook's not that big. Yep, now you're, <laughs> now you're Matt Robertson Jr. What's up, Drake? Toby? Um your kids got you a PS5. That's awesome. Uh, I probably ought to get on. Uh, I think I should stream snipe Andrew and Upshaw, but I'm not good, so I should put Bateman Jr. in Upshaw's lobby. It would be great. Uh, been slow past week. Backs off still tans. Come to fish. Yeah, dude, as soon as it warms up, get some extra time. I'm ready. Um, whew. My feet are freezing. We've been on for, what, about an hour and a half now, Hella Bass? Two different streams. Yeah, 90 minutes. We're creeping. 89 minutes. I'm still... What do you want to talk about? Let's get a topic going real quick before we get jump off here. I'm still wrecking the previous... Well, let's see. Well, I did show these on that stream the other night, but we haven't shown them on yours. I did pick up... I know we're not big fans of the KL, but if, if Tacklecraft's going to lay down some sick paint jobs on a KL... Dude, he did a good a good job. Check out that clear jank juice. Yeah, so we got a, like a clear copper parrot like I, this was the one I really wanted was this kind of like clear parrot gill yeah. for our clear waters and then I had to get one that was kind of a clear table rock shad jaint juice yeah dude that's nasty I like that um, but and, and considering that the good one they don't make the good 1.5s anymore I guess what's the difference if they're KO yeah, or not because I, you can't get I'm going to be honest one. about that you know it's 6 cents makes one H2O uh, and there's so many companies using that same style blank. At this point, that's different than, you know, the Guggen Squad coming out with a bait that looks just like this. And that's the only style on the market. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, or or anybody. I'm just, you know, no offense to Guggen's. I'm just saying. But I, those blanks have been out there for a long time. And if anybody doesn't know the story, that's how Six Cents started. Casey was painting those style blanks on the Bass Fishing homepage for a long time. Right. So. Whoa, shout out Woody Wilson with the $5. Make you holla. Thank you, Woody. Uh, there was a question from... Go ahead. What do you, what do you love? One question from Freestyle Bass, and he was asking about my favorite swim jig. I've got two. I really like the Brovarney and the Super K. Um, so if I'm fishing more open water with fluorocarbon, I like that Brovarney. Uh, if I'm going to throw it in the slop, heavy in the pads or if I want to use braid I use the super k both Wisconsin companies hand tied hand poured swim jigs Brovani, I really don't buy any of the like Brovani's got to be pretty produced good ones. I know guys in Kentucky know about it that was kind of one of the first swim jigs I'd really heard about was the Brovani um and then dirty jigs and monster uh there was another company that made a really good one we, we used to carry down here I've got the name, but I've got a Bravarni somewhere. It's nice. It's got a good hook in it. Uh, yeah, the Bravarni's a light wire hook, though. It is. It so, 
Um, it's not something you can't do your southern style swim jigging where you're yanking on them. So, Omni fishing, uh, they're based at what, Minnesota? Yeah, Golden Valley, Minnesota. Um, so, which is nice because they're centrally located. So, shipping is usually pretty quick for everybody, which is nice. Uh, what do I like for my swim jigs, Don G? Um, depends. Something but either a 733 or a 734, depending on how heavy and what style. Who makes the Monsur one? Is it custom made for him? Uh, for a while, there was a Bass Pro Monsur. Mm -hmm. But I think really the original Monsur jig, the closest one you're going to find is the Lethal Weapon. That's the one I was thinking about, Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon's a good swim jig, too. I, I probably shouldn't sleep on that. That's, But those are all, you know... You know, how much local Wisconsin swim jig? How much different though is that northern swim jig style than like the Texas Florida swim jig, where like you got the divine swim jig from Six Sense? You know, the heads are different. The Six Sense does not have a finesse hook. It's more of a heavy yeah. cover swim jig. Yeah, I mean, the true Monsieur one, he makes his own. Uh, <clears throat> the closest one you're gonna find that you can buy is the Lethal Weapon. Uh, that's good. <clears throat> and then, um, but the big difference is the, the northern swim jigs have really pretty light weed guards. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They're, uh, and then the angle, the style of the head is a little more like the old J Mac oh. heads. Kind of about that cone yeah, head. Like a, basically, uh, like a Nichols head, like a Nichols spinner base. Yeah, style. a little, yep. Yeah. And then the the southern ones are going to have a little bit wider, fatter head. It's going to be a little bit closer to a flipping jig. Right. They typically have a bigger hook, a bigger weed guard, a fuller skirt. <clears throat> like all the most of the northern swim jigs won't have the, <clears throat> the the under part of the skirt. They only have the outside of the skirt. If that makes sense. Here you go. Here's a question, Hella Bass. Best worm rod and pitch frog in the Cadence series. Who I'd love. To, I need to know the Cadence. Do they make a 734 in the Cadence? Um, the Cadence are going to be out really soon. Where was the question? I didn't hear it. What is the best worm rod or pitching and frogging rod in the Cadence series? I'd have to look quick to see. I think they make a 715 and a 745. I think one of those. Uh... I'm kind of mad because I didn't I didn't get any when they came out with that, and I'm waiting for these new ones. I'm probably going to grab a couple this year. Um, let me just look here. That was, yeah, seven seven one five or seven forty five is what I would look at uh, for yeah for that heavy big worm pitch frog rod for sure. So if if you don't have like boat car kayak issues go 745 if you need a little shorter rod because of space restraints 715 dude i like a seven foot one rod like uh you know the the limus uh 853s 854s in rx's those are really really good um bateman rattle off a couple smaller mom and pop companies that make spinner and swim jigs uh Let's see. Spot Sticker makes amazing spinner baits. Got the Bateman Special on Spot Sticker. Can't forget them. Accent. Uh, got some local companies around home. Greenfish Tackle makes a good spinner bait. Um, I don't know if Nichols counts. They're kind of big now. But um, Slongs Fishing. They make a good spinner bait. They're local here. Uh, swim Jigs. Um, Greenfish makes a good swim jig. Uh, everything Rich just said, Lethal Weapon, Bravarni, yeah, Bravarni those, Super, K. Super K, those are all, you know, I won't say mom and pop, but they're not going to be on the top <laughs> sellers at Tackle Warehouse anytime. Oh, 177 Well, Clayton, glad your day's getting better, and here's to you, bud. <laughs> no problem, Clayton. Dude, I hope everything is going good for you. Uh, we'll keep you in mind. Um, dude, I, there's someone just said, can't forget the $1 Walmart spinner baits, dude. Those one dollar buzz baits you get in mom and pop shops, dude. Some of those are legit. They don't even put a name on them. You know, you just in there like, oh, that's a dollar. Throw it in my bag. And all of a sudden, boom, you catch one. There you go, Darius. There's a good one. Punisher jigs and spinner baits. Punisher makes a great, great spinner bait special. Uh, a night time one. You should um. Tempo spinner bait. There's a good one. You should 
check your subscribers. I should what? You should check your subscribers. Check my subscribers? I don't... I hadn't got any new subscribers in the... Mm -hmm. Tonight, or my alert box would have went out. Um, I think we're about 250 from 16,000. So if you're new, make sure you hit that sub button for me. Um, and hit that... Hit the bell. like button as well. And hit that bell to turn on notifications. Chris North says he likes the straight shooter uh, designed by Hank Cherry Swim Jig. Uh, Picasso. <laughs> oh, I'm, mm, I'm about to go on a rant here. Like, speaking of, I like Picasso stuff, okay? Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy some of their stuff. I saw a picture today where they knocked off Ron Coleman spot sticker mini me. And I don't mean kind of knocked it off. I mean down to the gauge wire. Uh, I got sent a picture. I actually talked to Coleman. He's pretty upset about it. But he also said, what can he do? Uh, so, if that, you know, I don't know if it's going to come to market, but if it does, that's kind of a crappy thing to do. I, you know, that just tells me Aaron Martins didn't design it if it's a knockoff. But, you know, I like, I like a lot of Picasso stuff. They've always treated me good. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, the Bill D's, original Bill D's Mini Me, it's now Spot Sticker Mini Me by Ryan Coleman. You know, Ryan and Bill partnered on that co company when Bill passed away. You know, Ryan took the whole thing over. But, um, yeah, pretty crazy. We'll see, though. Uh, again, it was only a prototype. Things change. So. <laughs> what else we got, Hella Bass? Um, Have you got sign up yeah, going up for your fantasy sub, fishing I'm yet? I'm, I'm making a push for 3K, so if you guys haven't checked out my channel yet, take a look. I've got some uh, a bunch of good stuff. Uh, we have started the fantasy fishing groups. Um, so my group's up. It's Beat Hellabass. I did make it private this year because I only want like people in the community to win the prizes. So And uh, Jigs for Pigs is the password. I have the password posted on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on my YouTube. So if you guys mean my group, Beat Halibass, Fancy Fishing, it just opened up, uh, so that'll be cool. Is Batman Jr. Uh, eligible? Like, can I play and then him have his own team? You guys can both have your own team. You want to play Fancy Fishing? What's that? Okay, good enough. You probably don't yes. need to be eligible. Just say yes. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I like how you said that. Uh, do you wanted your uh, Fancy Fishing to only kind of be eligible for your community? So you password it? Um, I think I'll I'll probably do the same thing eventually. I want to just keep it to subscriber only or, or some way like that. Just the YouTube community because uh, one year I was running a tackle store and we did it and it turned into bad deal. Like, yeah, I thought a couple I mean, hundred people might join. It was like a couple thousand. And The problem is that like if you open it public, which I've done in the past, like basically everybody that like the same person wins everything, right? They win yeah. every group. The same two or three or five people. So, um. yeah, I want uh, if I do something, I want do. Obviously, I don't. I don't have tackle warehouse money or anything, but I would like to reward the people maybe that don't win, but just finish second, third, fourth, and fifth. You know, even if it's gag gifts for finishing fifth. You know, I'll send you the dancing eel. I don't know, but. Uh, hmm. uh, Henry Harrington, thank you so much for the comments tonight. It seems like you're enjoying the stream. I enjoy you being here. Uh, Tim, I'm not sure I'm the best fishing channel. I might not even be the best live streaming fisherman, but I just like to have fun and tell it like it is. And sometimes I, I, I say some crazy things, but <laughs> when I say my crazy thing isn't the, a, the aliens just probed me before the show, my crazy is just like ranting about fishing tackle, so. Dude, Hellabass' channel is great, dude. He is like the northern version of me. He's a little more calm. Um, I do a little more fishing. And, yeah. A little less baits, a little more fishing. He's never going to lay me down. What if I, for like the next, come March, what if I didn't upload a bait video for the rest of the year and it was all fishing videos just to make you eat crow? <laughs> I believe it when I see it. Now, there might not be any fish catch. I'm not going to lie. I'm uploading a fishing vid, uh, video Sunday evening. There's not a fish catch in it. <laughs> he tried to catch one but uh it's gonna be fun going with him uh because i want to teach him how to catch fish and i will sacrifice some fish catches over that whole deal and uh, that's okay we'll have father-son fishing challenges 
I'm not losing, by the way. Like I'll, one bait, one hour. One bait, one hour. He spoiled it. We already had one, didn't we? Yeah, and I, 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 I barely lost a, I barely lost a I really do think he got one and it come off. I just, I don't think he got the hook buried up in. So, we had fun. Jared? I want I just want to put the video so y'all can see how good this dude casts with good equipment. He just can bomb out that little swim bait now, so. Uh, Jared says, pick one A-Rig swim bait. Ooh. Straight up, Kitek. If you gave me one, of, uh, I think the Kitek is, is probably overall. So here's the deal on a Kitek. You can find it anywhere. Multiple colors, multiple sizes. I mean, I like the Six Sense Divine. I actually like the Big Bite uh, Suicide Shad really well, too, on an A-Rig. But you can't find the Divine swim baits everywhere. Uh, in mom and pop shops or the big bite. That's why the Kitex is so good. You can find it anywhere. You, you can find them at Walmart now. Bateman Jr. is going to win. Or a Rage Swimmer. Um, so. Dude, Bateman Jr. is probably going to whip me pretty good. So. Uh, Skinny Dipper would probably be my number two. So, A Rig Swim Baits, I'd go with uh, Kitex, um, Skinny Dipper. And by Kitex, you could put Rage Swimmer in there. Um, the big bite. The six cents, and then the little bitty ignite slash the Scottsboro three and a half four inch. I like solid. So I would say that. Baits. Yeah, I think you could probably get away with the Rage Swimmer or some of the other like Kitek knockoffs. Yeah. Because on an A rig, it's not quite so critical. So that's probably I'd go a little cheaper. And I normally, if I'm going to fish a single one, <laughs> I'm going to throw a Kitek. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to throw it on an A rig, I probably would use the the slightly cheaper ones. Yeah. Um, I don't think the fish really care on an A rig. I think it's all. I think one. I'm not throwing an A rig without blades on it. Whoa, Sean! Lie ten dollar. Make you holla, Sean. Uh, you're banned from donations, by the way. Um, but <laughs> I appreciate that. I am. I, I'm sending Sean one of these. Uh, someone won a giveaway, and uh, they said send it to Sean. So I'm going to send him one of those eaters bosses, and uh, a couple other secret things. I gotta get those in the mail in the morning. Been a busy week. Dryer going out, dog peeing in the floor, kind of deal. So, um, Tim Maynard, skinny dippers have tight wiggle and Kitex are more aggressive. I agree with that. Cold, cold water. I like a Kitex. Uh, once you get to throwing that rig and the water's 50 degrees or more, I feel like you can get away with a little stiffer swim bait. You know, Tim and Matt talk a lot about you know, tactical bass, and I agree with Matt 100%. The softer your swim bait is, the better it is in cold water. Because swim baits it? tend to harden up when it's cold. So. Did you get it fixed right now? What Taylor say? He said he couldn't agree. Dustin Taylor's also a great fisherman. If he tells y'all something, y'all might want to listen. Um, suicide shads are awesome on a buzz, but yes, they are. Sean, appreciate the $10. Make you holler. Uh, thanks for joining in tonight. So, All right, dude. It's almost 11 o'clock. I've been on for about an hour and 40 minutes. Um... I think I'm going to let this thing breathe, and we're going to get Millican fishing on here at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, so somebody said, somebody asked this. They want to know the email, so I put it up. Submit your jaint to ratemyjaint at gmail. Dude, thank you, Hella. Appreciate that. And you haven't been putting that in the description. I had to go back three videos to find it. So. All right, well, I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I get a little tired. Um <laughs> You got to go back and this get that. This is why in your, you're my your, moderator. This is the things you do behind the scenes that nobody knows. You got to get that back in your default settings. I know. I always, get, I always think, oh, I don't need to put it in default. I'll just uh, put it on there. So, but yeah, rate my jank, send me. I don't care how big it is. Now, obviously, if you live on Lake Fort and you send me a 15 inch, I'm probably gonna give it a one. Uh, but uh, every week we'll do rate my jank. If I don't have enough to do a whole video, I'll, I'll plug it up on here for 10 minutes and uh, let the people vote. And uh, I so want is, you to is vote this going to be a, not is the just, rate my jank going to be a standalone video? Or is it going to be part of the stream? What's the well? Justin Roll does the tackle wall Tuesday. I agree with him. Come original, don't come all. So I don't want to do a tackle wall Tuesday. I don't want y'all to send me your tackle pictures. So I figure rate my jank. You send me photo of your favorite big bass you can send me one every week we'll rate it uh small mouths get bonus points just because they're really pretty uh, don't send me any stripers though can i send stuff that i caught when it when my lakes weren't frozen or is that to be something i caught lately you can send it 
I like vintage photos too. So if you got something, you're wearing Dale Earnhardt sunglasses, uh, a tank <laughs> top and short shorts, send that to me. I like vintage photos. <laughs> Wait a minute, Bateman's fish. I will even put my own jaints uh, on here. I've got, I've actually got photos of me fishing back in the well, day. Well, Henry, I've caught zero fish in 2021 because my lakes are frozen and I refuse to go ice fishing. So, so got, you're ahead. Of I can get a head start on you right now. You need it. Damn, look, look at this guy talking smack. So here's a question I was thinking about. What what I wanted to ask the audience, the people that are bait man, like what would people think of like a live mod where like in the lower corner there's like a little live mod and they just kind of mute up, but they just kind of like come in, kind of like maybe kind of like BTC. <clears throat> oh, uh, like. Uh... A live moderator? Yeah, like just down in the corner, little mini cam chimes in when you guys get stuck or if you miss a question or Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Anytime I have uh people on, like tomorrow's a special night, like Milliken. Yeah, no, I'm just saying like every now I mean we would do it all the time, but every Oh yeah, but like anytime me and Eric stream or like I have a guest and Eric's not on, absolutely we gotta have a gotta have a little mod. Number one, we always need accountability. You know what I mean? And correction. Yeah, Ryan, it's so crowded up there, it's just not what it used to be. But maybe. <laughs> it's, I went up there a couple times to try to make a video, and it hasn't really worked out. It's been really tough. <clears throat> I watched some Ike Live tonight. It's pretty good all over now. And then. I, watched, I watched a little bit of the replay, listened to the podcast. He's, he's an interesting cat, for sure. He's definitely interesting. I've met him. Um, he kind of has this... I don't mean it's bad. He's kind of got like this Michael Jordan-ish thing to him mm -hmm. i know he's definitely not michael jordan of bass fishing but it's just kind of that same uh you know style like the way he dressed and all that he's he's different um uh, do not maybe the bass. michael jordan's of swim baits <laughs> yeah he, he's kind of got that i don't mean michael jordan a jump man style you know like the the college basketball yeah. stuff that they're all in the jump man he's doing the jump man uh bass fishing thing so um Obviously, he's caught, caught some really big fish in his day. Um, there's a lot of Oliver Nye haters, though. Uh, I saw some people really lighting him up on swim bait uh, forums <laughs> yesterday. Um, I don't know the story. Details don't really care. Again, goes back to, if you're cool to me, I'm cool to you. He was cool to me. So I will say, one. Well, so next Wednesday night, I'm having Gussie Ooh. on my stream. We're going to talk smallies. He's a cool dude. By the way, he, yeah, he started he, following he, me on Instagram. We might even get off fishing a little bit because he does some really cool stuff with like wolf hunting and moose hunting and like crazy stuff up in Canada, and like he's got some good stories. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, Paul, as someone said, Seth Polinick and Jokimson was on Ike too. Yeah, those are all good dudes. But I, uh, I like Gus. He started following me randomly and commenting some some of my stuff. But, you know, on Instagram, you don't know if those are really the pros or whatnot, but. Everybody I've talked to is like, dude, Gussie's a good, legit. Uh, I'm pretty sure Gussie runs his own account, from what I know. I'm not sure if David Fabry runs his. There's some weird stuff that goes on there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you see a lot of fishing po uh, pictures on my account, somebody's hacked mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, uh, we're going to wrap it up tonight. I don't know if I'll make thumbnails or not. We look so good. We had to do like a double stream tonight. So, anyway, join me 8 o'clock Central Time tomorrow night. Me, Ben Milliken, Milliken Fishing, Hella Bass moderator. Uh, go over to his channel, send him a donation to his PayPal because he's going to need it. We're going to work his tail off tomorrow night. Oof. I'm going to have to make, mix two drinks. I say so that, I have we'll to get like 80 viewers. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're going to try to bring it hard tomorrow night. So, make sure you share uh, the stream. Uh, with somebody on social media. Bateman Jr., you did awesome tonight. Hella bass. Nux to you. Guys, you guys have a wonderful...